This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is the Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the Liz Building Lifestyle with your host, Igor Kafitz. Ever since I started online, I've heard this term closer. People who were closers, you know, quote unquote closers, they were always celebrated because everybody thought that you had to be a closer in order to make a lot of money. And for years, I tried to learn every trick that I could find on becoming a better closer. I would study some NLP. I would study copywriting, I would do anything that I could, and I would invest in any product or training that I could in order to become better at closing people, at making people give me money, or at making people say yes to an offer. In fact, I even invested in Jordan Belfort's The the Wolf of Wall Street course, The Straight Line System. At one point, and that's a $2,000 investment. Now, it's a great course, of course, and, and its sole focus is to help you become a better closer because that's what Jordan Belfort is famous for, right? He had a team of closers working for him, and he claims that uh, back in the day, all he needed was for you to be hungry, young, and stupid, and he could teach you how to close. Now, I found out eventually that there's something wrong with this mentality because any time that I shifted into the closing mode, I became so desperate for the sale that this desperation almost transferred onto the other side of my computer screen, whether I was writing an email or maybe having like a Skype chat or maybe a Skype call with my prospect and the prospect would pretty much just back out. And that would leave me frustrated for days because I would beat myself up for pretty much just screwing the sale. Now, like I said, this is the wrong way to go about closing sales in your business. In fact, if you are selling business opportunities, if you're marketing business opportunities, more often than not, as soon as you try to quote unquote close somebody, they start coming up with objections and excuses and they start telling you how they don't have the money or they don't have the experience or they're afraid it won't work for them and so on and so forth. And what I discovered is that there is a shift that is required of you, that is a mindset shift that you can go through that will completely eliminate this neediness from your marketing and will make people actually feel comfortable doing business with you and even you know, change the conversation to a point where they're the ones asking you to basically show them what you got. And this shift happens way before the sale which is the beautiful part because there's literally nothing that stops you from shifting right now. And so the shift has to go from trying to close a sale to simply starting a sales conversation. Now, a sales conversation is a conversation where the prospect is going to say a yes or a no to an offer that he or she will be presented with at the end of that conversation. But before the offer will be presented to the prospect, there's another stage that has to take place and that is to identify whether you and the prospect are a good fit with each other. In other words, your job as a marketer is to not close more sales. It is to start more conversations. And these conversations have only one goal when they start out. And that is to find out whether or not this is a good fit. Quite literally, you want to identify the problems that the prospect is experiencing and the solution you offer and to see whether this is a great match. Now, if it is a great match, the prospect will be excited to hear what you got. And all you have to do is get the prospect's commitment before you share your offer to tell you whether it's a good fit or not. Basically, the prospect has to say yes or no at the end of that conversation because maybe is not an answer. Maybe is not an acceptable answer for a salesperson. And so if you make this transition from marketing to close more sales to marketing 
in order to start more conversations that lead to discovery, discovery conversations. And then these conversations would lead to either a positive or negative response from your prospect. You will notice how there's literally no neediness that you will be projecting and that will lead to closing more sales. Now, the approach is very counterintuitive to most approaches out there. In fact, Again, observing this industry, observing the business opportunity space in the recent years, I see more and more sales coaches and sales trainers and closers pop up all the time. And I've had uh, a few of these closers on my show as guests. And, you know, let me tell you, these guys know what they're doing. You know, they are extremely skilled at getting people to say yes. And to be honest, I am a bit jealous with their superpower because I always wanted to be one of those slick talkers, you know, people who are able to get other folks to say yes to virtually anything they want to sell. However, you know, when I went into selling the high ticket coaching program, something I've talked about on the show many, many times and shared lessons from that, I learned immediately that trying to close people, trying to push them into that big commitment almost never word for me. I mean, I don't know if it, you know, it could be working for other people perhaps, but for me personally, pushing people into a big commitment, into a large financial investment. And when I say large, of course, it's relative to the prospect. So, you know, for somebody, $100 is a large commitment for another person, 10,000. And for another person, it's going to be 100,000. So whatever that large commitment is, pushing people into a commitment in any case always resulted, it just backfired for me, always, because it would first off, it would change the dynamic of the entire conversation from being this pleasant, easygoing conversation to being this awkward and high pressure conversation, which I really hated because I just hate pressure. I mean, I just, you know, oftentimes don't even know how to deal with it. So I want to eliminate pressure both for myself and for my prospect as much as possible. And one of the ways to do it is to not try to close the sale, but rather have a discovery conversation where you are able to identify whether or not it's a good fit. And then, you know, the prospect simply has to say yes or no without any sort of like high stakes or whatever. Another thing I really hated about pushing people into making a buying decision is I felt like I was manipulating them. I felt like I was not allowing them to make a choice. And it it goes back to this old saying that says people love to buy, but they hate being sold to. And so think about it. When you are pressuring somebody into a a large commitment, if you're literally trying to manipulate them into a yes, they feel like they're being led to it. They feel that they have not really made a decision on their own. However, if you just started the conversation, identified whether this is a great fit, and then presented them with a choice, when they say yes or no, it's them making a decision. And that yes, it actually sticks. No kidding. This yes will stick 10 times better than any high pressure yes you'll ever get from a prospect. This prospect, the one who says yes because they want to say yes, is usually going to end up becoming your raving fan and will keep following you for years and years and years. And that is why ever since this discovery for me, I went ahead and I completely changed and adapted all my sales process in every possible uh, venture that I've ever started into one of, you know, here is what we got. Here's what this can do for you. Here's why you should act now. And uh, if you don't want to act now, it's perfectly fine. And, you know, by doing so, by removing the pressure from the prospect, I was able to easily build quite a few businesses to the six figure and multiple six figure sizes without any high pressure sales. It was really all built on goodwill. And this is really my advice to you in this episode is to truly consider the difference between a marketer who is constantly trying to get a sale and that marketer is needy, right? And that neediness is just, you know, the prospects can can smell it like shit on a shoe, right? They can really smell it and they will not do business with you if you're needy. To shifting that towards starting a sales conversation, identifying the prospect's problems and desires, and seeing whether your solution is a great fit. And if it is, simply presenting the prospect with a choice to say yes or no. And if they choose to say no, quite literally telling them if you want to say no, that's perfectly fine, no hard feelings. And you will see how your business will boom as a result of that because the prospects will no longer feel 
like they're being pushed into a decision like they feel with virtually every other marketer and every other business that they encounter. That's why everybody hates sales, by the way. That's why everybody really hates being sold to. That, that's why when they kind of step into a, a store or, or whatever, you know, like a shop, if the sales representative is come approaching them asking, you know, do you need any help? They're immediately saying, no, no, no. Even if they do need help, simply because they quote unquote don't want to be sold to. So create the other side of that create a different environment within the marketplace and you'll notice how tons and tons of prospects will cling to you and will insist on doing business with you simply because you don't pressure them into a decision thank you for listening to the list building lifestyle make sure to subscribe on itunes or google play to never miss an episode because who knows just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.